You are about to listen to Kaku chapter 131. The Three Satanic Religions of Revelation 16 verse 13. Letter that Prophet Kaku Philippe wrote, on July 8, 2018 to all the religious people of the whole world. Extracted from the book of Prophet Kaku Philippe, the only true prophet sent by the Lord Jesus Christ, for the salvation of our generation. Kaku chapitre 131 Kaku 131, The Three Satanic Religions of Revelation 16 verse 13. Letter that I, Prophet Kaku Philip, prisoner until May 20, 2021, because of the Gospel of Christ, I have addressed on this July 8, 2018 to all the earth, to make them know the revelation which was given to me on the three great satanic religions of mankind, according to Revelation 16:13 and according to the vision of April 24, 1993. I, Prophet Kaku Philip, I was sitting with mine on June 7, 2018. And at 12 hours 24 minutes p.m., the revelation on Revelation 16:13 came to me again from the Almighty God, He who exists by Himself, the uncreated, He who does what He wants according to His will. He who exalts and brings down whom He wants. And from that June 7, I woke up every day at 4 a.m., at the time of the muezzin, no matter the time at which I slept, until the revelation was complete. Revelation 16:13 says, And I saw out of the mouth of the dragon, three impure spirits, as frogs. Who are these three spirits of frog in Revelation 16:13? Who are these three demons that roam over the earth? No man has ever revealed the true identity of these three demons as it is done for Revelation 17, which is the Roman Catholic Church. Thus, it was revealed to me by the angel of April 24, 1993, that this satanic trinity as frogs is Islam, Christianity, and Judaism. Revelation 16:13 says that they are spirits of dragons and of false prophets that are out to conquer the earth. Hinduism and Buddhism and all religions of the earth are also of the devil, but the three spirits of frogs in Revelation 16:13 are, Islam, Christianity, and Judaism. These three religions claim to be of Abraham. These three religions believe in Moses. These three religions do not believe in living prophets, but each of them claims to be of a prophet whom it has not known. Each of them has its own holy book. And the three do not need a living prophet, but they are waiting for the Messiah who is yet a prophet. They are the three spirits of frogs of Revelation 16:13. The eyes of the frogs are on their heads. They can see what God did in the past before their birth, and see what God will do in the future after their death, but they cannot see what God is doing today for salvation. It is the demon of Islam, Judaism, and Christianity. And the frogs cry as, believe, believe, believe exactly like the crows cry. It is the religion of your parents, you must believe, believe and believe, that's all. If they are going to hell, you must go to hell. Frogs do not walk, but jump from dead prophet to dead prophet. And one day, when I am dead, they will jump and land here. The Lord Jesus Christ walks in the midst of seven golden lamps, but frogs jump from tomb to tomb. From the tomb of Moses to the tomb of the Lord Jesus Christ. From the tomb of Martin Luther to the tomb of John Wesley. From the tomb of John Wesley to the tomb of William Branham. And one day, after I die, they will come to my tomb. I, Prophet Kaku Philip that speak to you, I was born and I have lived on the earth, and one day I will leave the earth. But there are two things that I have never understood on earth. First, homosexuality, the fact that a man marries a man, and then, the fact that for salvation, men are led by pastors, imams and rabbis, instead of a living prophet. There is no religion that is closer to God than the other. The way of salvation is a living prophet. And how can a man be in the will of God without a living prophet? God told me on April 24, 1993, He who believes in you will come to the waters of baptism. It must be natural water where there are fish. You will turn him toward the east and baptize him in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ for restitution. This will be the baptism for your time. And you Jews, Christians, Muslims, Buddhists, 
and Hindus, have you also done your baptisms exactly like that since April 24, 1993? And you black Africans, know that there are three groups on the earth, the Jews, the Samaritans, and the nations. Judaism is the religion of the Jews, Islam is the religion of the Arabs, and Christianity is the religion of the nations. There is neither Islam nor Judaism in black Africa. And the Arabs who sold Muslim migrants in Libya are the best Muslims. And your pilgrimages to Mecca are pig sacrifices on the Kaaba. Europeans and Americans come to Africa to convert us to Christianity. But have you ever seen Jews come to Africa to convert us to Judaism? Or Arabs come to convert us to Islam? All those black Africans in Islam. It is like blacks lightening their skin to look like white people. And you say. Why do you speak to us like this, while you want to save us? Know that, what will lead you to perdition is not my language, but it is Islam, Hinduism, Buddhism, Christianity and Judaism in which you are. In the vision of April 24, 1993, I saw the crowd of the saved ones come to me. And no matter what I do, and no matter what happens, the elect will come to me, but you Jews, Christians, and Muslims, you are the incarnation of evil and you will go to hell, that is why you cannot believe in me to be saved. I know that the hand of God has always been with me to keep me, and I will fulfill the will of God. In the prison, God kept my life. One night in my prison cell in 2016, I woke up with a jolt and in front of me, in the dark, was a man who has been in prison for over five years without trial for killing his wife whom he then cut to pieces and put in his freezer. He was scared and he went back to sleep. The hand of God is with me to keep me. And I also pray that this grace will be with Yishash Lissel in his prison in Israel. I will fulfill the will of God who sent me on April 24, 1993. And all the elect of my time will come to me, as I saw it in this vision of 1993. It is around a living prophet on the earth that God gathers his children. You claim to be of Muhammad, Moses, Jesus of Nazareth while they are not your prophets, and are no longer on the earth. How can Abraham Lincoln who died in 1865 be the president of the Americans today? Can a corpse be the prophet of the living? What is this proverb? When you say that Jesus Christ or Muhammad is your prophet, it is an abuse of language just like your presidents who say that it is God who established them, while it is their population who established them by votes. How can a dead man be the prophet of the living? And how can a prophet say that he is the last prophet? If I tell you that after me there will no more be prophets, this will mean that the world will come to an end on the day of my death. But if the world continues, this will mean that I am a false prophet, or you misunderstood me. It is as if Donald Trump was saying that he is the last president of the United States. The notion of last prophet is an imbecility. Salvation through a holy book or a dead prophet is an imbecility. But you, if you are a son of God, no matter what leaves you out of a religion, you shall never seek another religion, or a holy book that would be better than the others. But you shall seek the living prophet of your time and he will tell you what you need to do to be saved. Outside of a living prophet, there is no word of God. All those interpretations of holy books that you consume in your temples, churches, mosques and synagogues are transgenic food, food for pigs. If it is not to seek God through the living prophet of your time, it is useless to change religions or holy books. Because all religions and faith in those holy books lead to the same hell. Do not say, I was in Orthodox Judaism. But now I am in the Mazordi Judaism, or with the Reformed Judaism. Or do not say, I was a Sunni Muslim but now I am a Shia, or Salafist. One can never get close to God through a fast, a consecration or some Sufism. But through a living prophet. And until your death. Do not forget that God is not in a pious religion, or in a holy book, but with his prophets while these prophets are alive on the earth. And no prophet ever founded a religion. God is not in a religion, and I do not believe that a pious member of Islam, Judaism or Christianity can go to heaven without believing in the living prophet of his time. 
and a son of God cannot die in a religion. God does not recognize the efforts that you make in all those religions. And if you are good and honest, with a good heart, God will never let you die in a religion, without believing in the living prophet of your time. And you Jews and Arabs, you are sons of Abraham. But how can the son of a prophet live without a living prophet? I that speak to you, I am your slave, and what you must teach me. It is what I teach you. How can one live without a prophet? The wicked of my village do not believe in God, but when they are in trouble, they seek to consult a seer. And you? How is it that for a supreme thing like salvation, you follow some rabbis, imams and pastors who are blind men like you? And your hearts are at peace with it. You act without fear as if after death, you could come back on the earth again to redeem yourselves. And you Muslims, if you believed in God, when Muhammad died, you would have said, O oh God, send us a prophet like Muhammad. And you wouldn't have established over yourselves, pastors, imams and rabbis, who are men like you, to lead you. Does an imam know God? Does a pastor know God? Does a rabbi know God? Can a sheep lead a flock of sheep? You Muslims, how do you know that Adam, Abraham, Jacob and Solomon are prophets like Moses, a fact that Christians do not know? And yet, you do not know that I am your Rasul. But what is the use of a dead prophet whom you have not known? You Jews, Muslims, and Christians, on what basis do you reject me and despise me? Abdullah Ndiye who is a great Muslim in Senegal believed in me, and received his baptism because, as he was translating my message into Wolof, he read it and he believed. But for salvation, why don't you read me like Abdullah Ndiye, Ahmadu Wari and Abu Muhammad? You prefer a dead Muhammad whom you did not know. And you reject me, I, the Rasul that God sent you today? And in what year was Muhammad, who died in 632? Your prophet. If you were following a living prophet, would you argue every year on the dates of the feasts, and the appearance of the moon after Eid al Fitr? And it is in this confusion that you want to lead mankind? If mankind followed God through his prophets, would there be several religions, and would each religion have its holy book and its own practices? And do you not know that it's a confusion? And the devil is behind that? The way to lead the earth to God is one and this way is called living prophet. And to preach that there should no longer be prophets is a crime against humanity. When you look in the Bible, the Torah or the Quran, it is like a man looking at the stars in the sky. And behind these stars, there are thousands of galaxies and mysteries that no one can know unless God reveals them. Now God speaks only through a living prophet and what this prophet says, it's what the priests pastors and rabbis that he has established must take and preach to the whole earth. But so as not to submit to God, you have chosen religion. And yet, the living prophet is the way to paradise, while religion and holy books are the ways to hell. Christianity is submission to Satan through an old book called the Holy Bible. Islam is submission to Satan through an old book called the Holy Quran. And Judaism is submission to Satan through an old book called the Torah. But submission to God, is to obey his word that he has given through the living prophet of your time. And look at your fruits. Christianity has thousands of branches, Judaism has thousands of branches and Islam has thousands of branches. You split, you argue, you fight in temples, churches, mosques and synagogues to choose your leaders and yet, all three of you do not want a living prophet, and you do not even feel the desire of it, and you are waiting until I die for me to be a true prophet. To what paradise will you go with that? After prophet Moses, the sons of Moses came and bowed before prophet Joshua. After prophet Elijah, the sons of Elijah came and bowed before prophet Elisha. And why do you Arabs, descendants of Ishmael who is the son of Abraham, a prophet of God, establish imams over yourselves to lead you. Does an imam know the way to heaven? Does God speak to some imams? Is Muhammad an imam? Why are you intelligent for the things of the earth, but for salvation you act like animals? 
while everything evolves, your salvation still rests upon old history books called Torah, Bible, and Quran, which do not concern you. Today, in the era of the internet and cybercrime, does the security of a bank still reside in its armored doors like in 1950? If you are able to walk without a living prophet, why do you immediately replace your pastors, rabbis and imams as soon as they die? Between the pastor and the prophet, which one is the most important, and who must be replaced immediately? Does God send rabbis, pastors and imams on the earth? Are Moses, Jesus and Muhammad imams or rabbis? Like a president and his ministers, it is a prophet who must establish his priests, rabbis and imams. When the president of the republic dies, you do not elect some ministers to lead the country and you know this very well. But for God not to lead you, and for fear that God will choose a slave to speak to you, you elect pastors, imams and rabbis on your own, according to your liking. And must God accept that? Into which paradise will you go with that? In this case, why don't you elect prophets? Instead of pastors, rabbis and imams, why don't you elect prophets like Moses, Jesus and Muhammad? And if you are in the light, why was the whole earth in darkness on April 24, 1993? And it was the glory of the angel that enlightened it like in Revelation 18 1. And if you are not sons of the devil, why do you pray together, you take pictures together and the Pope goes in your mosques? Can angels of God and angels of Satan take family pictures together? Sons of the devil, why do you replace the prophets with religions and holy books? Are Moses and Jesus Christ and Muhammad names of religions or names of prophets? And if Muhammad is not the name of a religion but the name of a prophet, then why do you prefer a religion to a living prophet? If you are truly the sons of a prophet, if you leave your church, mosque or synagogue, it is a living prophet that you must seek because deep calls unto deep. And according to you, is it by a religion or a holy book that we know the depth of God? Is salvation a living prophet? A religion or a holy book? Was not the Lord Jesus Christ the salvation and the light of the world in his time? And when he told Zacchaeus that salvation had entered into his house, was he talking about a holy book? And when, after the Lord Jesus Christ, God said that he established Paul to be the light and salvation of the world to the end of the earth according to Acts 13:47. What do you say about this? And you say to me, you are a false prophet. Do you know what a false prophet is? Which prophet have you known to know that I am a false prophet? Can the farmer of my village know a fake bill of the current $100 bill? Because he saw the picture of the old $100 bill of 1850 in a book? Call me a false prophet and you will be right if there is no last judgment. Islam, Christianity and Judaism are headless bodies. They are nightmares. They are zombie movies before God. And if someone is a member of Islam, Hinduism, Buddhism, Christianity or Judaism, his sanctification and his good works are an abomination before God like Mother Teresa's good works. Salvation is eternity. And a child of God cannot put his salvation in the hands of a rabbi, a pastor or an imam who will himself go and give an account to God, but in the hands of the living prophet of his time, who is the mouthpiece of God on earth. If you are Jews, Christians or Muslims, know that all those rabbis, pastors and imams who lead you on the earth are volunteers. It is not a prophet who established them. They are wicked hypocrites and sons of the devil. That is why they have enough courage to do what they are doing. They are liars. They preach their imaginations in temples, churches, mosques and synagogues. But I, Kaku Philip, it is in virtue of the vision of April 24, 1993, that I speak to you and every chosen one, no matter his religion, will say Amen and will come to that. I received a call and a commission directly from God through an angel on April 24, 1993. I have experienced things so supernatural that I wonder if a man has ever experienced this before me. In broad daylight, I was like the angel of judgment. 
that is to say a glowing white cloud like a mirage. And I saw and heard and moved without a body in the sky. And I have been in ecstasies, acting in a vision while I was sitting. But I have always sought to know if the true prophet of God is not somewhere else. But still, like Paul, I read the history of the church according to Daniel Rops and several other historians as I also read the Bible which is the history of Judaism. And I found my message in conformity with the faith of my fathers the prophets who came before me. In 1993, when I bought my Bible and began to read it, seeing Moses, Isaiah, Jeremiah, the first thing that I understood was salvation through a living prophet. And in September, I discovered William Branham, but unfortunately, he had already died. And on May 27, 1997, I wrote in the middle of my Bible, O oh God, if my heart reassures me on the way of perdition, have mercy on me and bring me back, I do not want to go to hell. And despite the great vision of April 24, 1993, I have always sought to know what a so-and-so was doing somewhere, and I have exhorted my believers to do the same. Before God, I have never heard of an important religious man and despised that. God's way is only the way of a living prophet. And the way to hell is the way of the religions, the holy books, the pillars and sacraments. And when a son of God is a religious leader, he will always lead his people in the faith to the prophets of God. And that is the reason why I want that, after me. Apostle Martin keep the flock, it is true that he fled to Ghana when I was in prison. But he is the one who will make room for Paul after me. He was a great evangelical prophet. But he made his church members accept the message of William Branham, but he was astonished to see Branhamists come to his healing campaigns. And as soon as he heard about me, he called me and I went to baptize them, him and his church members. These are the signs of a son of God, and it is certain that after me, such a man will lead my people to the prophet who will come after me. God cannot establish on his people a man whose objective is not the salvation of his church members. Does salvation consist in coming and tell what God did in prehistory and the Middle Ages? Was Irenaeus a messenger of God because he described the experiences that he had with his master Polycarp? On April 25, 167, the flames of the stake had no power over the great prophet Polycarp. His side was pierced and the blood that came out extinguished the fire of the stake. And when he died, his body was burned and his ashes scattered, so that he would not rise again. And will God send a world Frank on the earth to travel to 170 countries to tell these things if it is not to make you sleep? Was Martin Luther telling about Wycliffe's great miracles? And after Wycliffe, God raised a great prophet in his place, John Huss. And do you think John Huss was burned alive because he described the experiences that he had with Wycliffe? As E. World Frank does to make you sleep? How is it that E. World Frank and the Branhamist pastors put you to sleep, sleep, sleep for more than 50 years and none of you wakes up? E. World Frank and the Branhamist pastors are the sleeping pills of the church today. And there must be a cry at midnight to wake up the church. And for them to exist. All the sermons in which William Branham talks about the continuity after him have been destroyed. After Moses, was Joshua a pillar of fire or was he a man? Did each tribe of Israel go their way with their pillar of fire, with the recitation of the scrolls of Moses? And if that were the case, wouldn't the tribe of Israel arrive in Jordan? Wouldn't another tribe arrive in Lebanon and another tribe in Iraq? And to go into Canaan, had Joshua lifted Moses' staff in the air to divide the waters of the Jordan? O oh Eve! Why did you do such great evil to the earth? By bringing Canaan to the world so that there would be Islam, Hinduism, Buddhism, Christianity and Judaism. O oh Eve! God brought man to the earth but you brought animals amongst men so that money, religions and holy books replace the living prophets. 
It is a prophet who comes after a prophet, and Hosea 12:14 says, And by a prophet Jehovah brought Israel out of Egypt. And by a prophet was he preserved. And even in the history of the church, after prophet Polycarp was killed in 167, the church had another prophet. And nowhere in all history is there any mention of some disciples of Polycarp telling old memories. And no one could come and ask people to believe in dead Polycarp as the Jews, the Muslims and the Christians do today. Whether Jesus is God or not, whether Moses is a true or false prophet, whether Muhammad is a true or false prophet, this is not important, this does not concern me. Everything they accomplished was for those of their time. Moses did not found Judaism, Jesus Christ did not found Christianity and Muhammad did not found Islam. You Jews, Christians, and Muslims, and you Branimists, you sons of the rebel Meta, who amongst you has the notion of prophet? And by which prophet did you have the notion of prophet? If one can know God through a book or through a brochure, why did the Jews, with the scrolls in their hands, kill the prophets? If one knows God through a book, why do you say that I, Kaku Philip that speak to you, I am a false prophet? And you Branhamists, if you had the notion of prophet, you would not say that this William Branham who fellowshiped with the priests of Egypt and the prophets of Baal was a true prophet. And it is I who would tell you that he was Father Abraham in Egypt. But having rejected God, you have stooped so low that you accept that some Ephesians 4, who are priests, have pillars of fire and some calls and commissions. So apart from Moses or after Moses, did some priests also have some calls and commissions and pillars of fire? And you Muslims, you despise me and yet I am your Rasul. And my message has already infiltrated Iran. I am the word from heaven. I am the way, the truth and the life. And no one can be saved unless by me. I am the rabbi of the Jews and the Rasul of Muslims. I am the prophet of the Christians, Buddhists, and Hindus. You are not obliged to believe in me, but I inform you that I am your prophet and you cannot be saved unless by me. Everything I am saying, I received the exclusive right to say them from God himself in 1993. I was standing in the wilderness, and the order to preach the judgment was carried by clouds which are the holy angels of God, and I say the truth. And as I moved forward, the big trees of the earth bent until their foliage touched the ground. And it was also said to me that, this message would go over the whole world and men from all the races of the earth would believe to be saved. And when one day, I will come before the throne of God, there will be in my lot, whites and blacks, Arabs and Jews and men from all nations of the earth who have not defiled themselves with temples, churches, mosques and synagogues. They are scattered over the earth. But they will hear and recognize in me the voice of the prophets, and they will come from Asia, Africa, Europe, and America. They will come from Islam, Hinduism, Buddhism, Christianity, Judaism and all the religions of the earth. And you, if you are a son of God, know that salvation is not in a religion. And salvation is not transmitted from father to son. The expansion of a religion will never be your struggle on the earth. Pilgrimage to Israel or to the Mecca and the Jihad will never be your struggle on the earth. Conflicts over Israel's capital and the reconstruction of a third temple in Jerusalem will never be your struggle on the earth. There is greater here than the holy book and the third temple combined. And your struggle is to be with God after your death. If, after Noah, God sent Moses, we must accept that after Moses God has the right to send Jesus Christ. If you believe that after Jesus Christ God sent Muhammad, you must accept that after Muhammad, God has the right to send other prophets as he wants. But if you were able to lock your God in a Christian, Muslim, Buddhist, Hindu, or Jewish religion, and tell him what he has no right to do then that God is Satan. And still, if you believe that you are sons of God, then know that religion is not an inheritance, which must be transmitted from father to son. 
When you were born, you are a seed in the ground. Your family or religion of birth constitutes the mass of ground above the seed. They are trials. And you must struggle and come out of the ground to see the light of God who sowed you. So that you may be a blessing to the earth. You Jews, Christians, Muslims, Buddhists, and Hindus, leave religion. Know that all seeds must be put in the ground. It is a divine law but you must not die in the ground. O oh God! Since the creation, you have brought hundreds of billions of men on the earth and now it is my turn and after my death. I will never be born again on the earth. There is no reincarnation. That is why I have preferred the narrow path of the word founded on the prophetic revelation, like the prophets who came before me. If I minister and if I judge the earth, it is because of what the Lamb told me on April 24, 1993, and it is with this that I will come before you at the judgment. And I, with no great education, I spoke on your behalf and the crowd came as you revealed it to me in 1993. And in this crowd, there are whites, blacks, and men of all races of the earth as you revealed it to me. And now, I see Arabs and Muslims too. I always thought that my message did not concern them. But now I understand the aspect of the sword that the angel was holding, and the gestures that the lamb was making. I did not know that in the crowd of the vision of April 24, 1993, there were also Jews, Arabs, Muslims, Buddhists, and Hindus. O oh God, I pray for Israel, India, Egypt, Iran, Iraq, Jordan, Saudi Arabia, Indonesia, and Pakistan. O oh God, I pray for the Pope, the Imams, the Rabbis and the Pastors. O oh God, open the eyes of Pope Francis I. Yasf al Dawi, Ahmad al Tayyib, the Dalai Lama and all the dignitaries of Islam, Hinduism, Buddhism, Christianity, and Judaism. I Kaku Philip. They have rejected me and chose religions and old holy books. They look at me and speak with contempt and arrogance. But I beg you to have mercy on them. O oh God, you loved your servant Abraham. And now remember Ishmael, legitimate son of Abraham. And grant grace to his posterity to recognize his Rasul today. The message of Prophet Kaku Philippe is in more than 100 sermons, in audio and written versions, and more than 20 video interviews. You can get them for free on the website www.philipkaku.org, or in version for Android and iPhone on Google Play and Apple Store. <laughs>